At IAS 2023, we start by honoring the traditional custodians of the land and pay respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. In our next conversation from IAS 2023, HIV.gov welcomes back Dr. Carl Diefenbach sharing updates on HIV vaccine research from the conference. Enjoy these videos. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Louis Shackelford from the HIV Vaccine Trials Network here reporting with HIV.gov from the 12th Annual International AIDS Society Conference. And I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Dr. Carl Diefenbach. How are you doing today, Dr. Diefenbach? I'm doing really well. It's great to be here with you, Louis. All right. So we're hearing so much about the science of HIV cure, about BNAVs, broadly mm -hmm. neutralizing antibodies, mm -hmm. and vaccines. So tell me, from what you've been hearing at the conference and new developments around vaccines, what stood out to you? What's something that is really exciting that you want people to know about? I think what's really exciting to know about where we are with HIV vaccines is how we have taken the information that we've learned from BNABs. And BNABs are natural antibodies that, the, that some people make against HIV that are quite potent, much more than, um, and by potent I mean they completely knock out HIV. So can we take the information we have about BNABs and turn it into a vaccine? And we are making really, really good progress on that. We heard specifically about uh, one specific part of the virus called an epitope mm -hmm. that is being turned into a vaccine. And then there are others that are also in the queue and moving along very, very nicely. So it's a really exciting time uh, for HIV vaccines. Awesome, awesome. So tell me more about BNABs. So what makes you really confident that BNABs are the way forward? Well, actually, we know that BNABs can prevent HIV infection, not just from animal model studies, but from a study that the HVTN did called the AMP studies, where it was able to, we were able to demonstrate that they actually, a single antibody now, protected people from acquiring HIV as long as the virus they were exposed to was sensitive. That's a long way of saying BNABs work. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean for a virus to be sensitive to an antibody? What it means for a virus to be sensitive to the antibody is the virus find the antibody finds the virus and that virus is no more. Mm. Awesome, awesome. So one thing I remember hearing was about how BNABs also have implications for HIV cure. So can you talk a little bit about how can BNABs be used to potentially cure HIV. So let's talk a minute about why we need a cure. And we need a cure because we have these wonderful things that we take every day called antiretrovirals that keep the virus completely suppressed in our bodies. Now, if you stop taking your drugs, the virus does something called rebound, and that is the virus reservoir. The virus is asleep because the cells are asleep. But what happens when you have BNABs is if the virus wakes up and the cells wake up, the BNAB can kill that cell. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of targeting and eliminating the reservoir. So that's why it is so important to have BNABs, not just for HIV prevention, but for HIV cure as well. Mm, awesome, awesome. So when it comes to treatment, do you see a day where we can move from a medication-based strategy to a BNAB-based strategy, maybe? I think we're going to have to have a hybrid. Mm. I think we're going to need a combination, like we have combination therapy for antiretroviral therapy, we're going to need combination therapies for cure as well. That will involve uh, standard antiretrovirals, BNABs, and probably other things added into this cocktail to get us to a cure. Maybe even a therapeutic vaccine. Awesome. Awesome. Is there any other takeaways from the conference that you want our audience to to hear about today? Anything that's really got you excited? So I think one of the things about the BNABs at this conference is how they're being explored in so many other areas, like a way of preventing mother-to-child transmission, like being just used um, in all the different ways scientists are creative. Mm. And it's great to see this explored, and then we'll get answers about how they're used and whether those, those ideas actually work. 
So awesome. that's, that's one of the great things about the International Aid Society meetings. We all come together, we have the opportunity to share our ideas, we go back to our offices and our labs with new collaborations and new excitement, and next year we'll hear about all the new findings. Awesome, thank you so much, Dr. Diefenbach. I really appreciate your time today, and thank you so much for joining us today. Please look out for more on the IAS conference in the coming days. Thank you and have a great day.